In 2007, I moved into the house that I currently live in. It's well over 100 years old. And ever since I can remember, there have been weird or creepy things that occur. Recently, I've heard noises late at night while I'm in bed. I sleep on the top floor of my house. Another thing is that in the hallway, we have an attic door that's bolted shut. It hasn't been opened by our family or my neighbors who used to live here, from what I've been told. I decided to ask my father about it, and he told me that it really isn't a full-sized attic. It's more of a crawl space, which goes right over my room. So why have I been hearing noises above me late at night? The part that creeps me out the most is that we've never had animals, beside the occasional mouse that gets in, which makes me think that what I'm hearing is not an animal. It really doesn't sound like any kind of animal I've ever heard scurrying around in an attic or outside. It seems almost human, but I don't know. I live in England in a two-story flat. I've always believed in the paranormal, but my dad doesn't believe in any type of ghost or anything paranormal. I never thought that this flat was haunted originally. However, as I got older, I started to feel uncomfortable by myself. I started to see shadows downstairs out of the corner of my eye. Now, there's an attic directly above our second floor but there's no way for us to enter it, as you don't have any access from this flat. The only way to access this attic is by having a specific key that can open the attic. It's Council Flats, which is above all my neighbor's house. However, the attic above my flat is the only one which is blocked off, and there's no way to enter it. I have the last flat on the end of these 18 council flats. There are no neighbors above us, just the attic, which no one can access without that key, and they would still not be able to get above our flat. One night, about two years ago, all of the family was in bed, and it was about three o'clock in the morning. All of a sudden, I heard something crash above me. It was so loud that it woke up the entire family, and we all got up and just stood on the landing together. After that bang, we heard three loud footsteps and the sound of something being dragged behind those footsteps. It was so scary, especially knowing that nobody could physically be up there. It's physically impossible. My dad was not convinced that it was a ghost. He thought that somebody, somehow, had gotten up into the attic. So he went outside to check if the communal attic door was opened. I followed him outside and it was completely padlocked shut with heavy chains all around the lock. I tried to explain my logic to him. How could anyone be up in our part of the attic when it's blocked off and literally impossible to get to? We came back into the house and we were all quite shaken up. My brother was quite young and was able to get back to sleep, but I was awake all night and found it very difficult to sleep. After this experience, I started to smell old cigarettes every time I would enter the bathroom. It smelled so old. After that event, my brother and my mom and I were going away on holiday whilst my dad had to stay here and work. He told me that he slept with his headphones on every night, as even he felt uncomfortable by himself. As a family, we still have no idea what those noises were, and since then we've continued to hear strange noises from the impossible to reach attic. This story is short and sweet, but I still wanted to share this experience. We're renting a house that was built in 1925. 
This house has had minimal activity, and my husband, a skeptic, is the one who's experienced the most. Shadows, lights turning off, and actually hearing the physical switch click. Strange noises, stuff like that. On Friday, as we were laying down for bed, I heard the sound of a child running from one side of the attic bedroom to the other. We have no children, but I have younger siblings and I remember that sound well. I know what it sounds like when little kids run through a house. When I heard it, I turned to my husband and he just nodded, looking at the ceiling, and then continued to harass me when I couldn't go to sleep. If we had lived in an apartment, I could have easily rationalized the noise. It was a similar level of sound. But we live in a house, completely by ourselves. It went on for about 10 minutes, and finally I fell asleep. I woke up at 3 a.m. for work, and there was no sound at all. It's definitely creepy. I was probably about 12 or 13, and my buddy was spending the night at my house. Like typical kids, we were up late, horsing around and drinking soda. I had curtains up in my room, and they used those old curtain rods that came apart and looked like swords. Being typical kids, we looked at each other, both grabbed one and yelled, on guard. We're right in the middle of our sword fight, and right above our heads, we start to hear creaking, as if somebody was rocking in a rocking chair. Keep in mind it was like 2 a.m., so everyone else was asleep. My house was an old house that was built around the 40s or 50s. I forget exactly which, but it was old. So I chalked it up to the house being old and settling. A few minutes later, we heard it again, right above our heads a slow, rocking back and forth type of creaking. We both lowered our swords and looked at each other with a, what was that, look on our face. I said, you heard that, right? And he said, no kidding, I heard that, what was that? I don't know, I said. But being young and fearless, I said, let's go have a look. We go to the attic door and slowly open it. I go up first, being as it was my house and I know the layout. I get to the top of the steps and look down to where the sound had come from. There was nothing of the rocking sorts, just stacks of dusty boxes. We go down to that end of the attic, just to make sure there wasn't like a rocking horse or something in the corner. But there was nothing that rocks. We just stood there with that spooked and confused look. I said, I don't know, dude, but let's get out of here. I'm getting a creepy vibe. As we started to walk away, we heard the wood floor creak behind us. But this time, it wasn't a rocking. It just sounded as though somebody had stepped out from behind the boxes. At this time, my buddy, who was now positioned in front of me, got spooked and bolted down the steps. I, on the other hand, was frozen in fear. I could feel someone standing behind me, and the back of me was chilled from head to toe. I didn't want to turn around, but I had to see if something was there. I slowly turned, and about four feet away there was a shadowy figure, standing at about the same height as me, with a human-like shape, and it was darker than the darkness itself. I yelled out an expletive and proceeded to run for the door, only to slip on the second step and slide the rest of the way down on my butt. I don't know if the shadow did that or my hysterics, but either way, it was totally freaky. The next day we told my parents. They replied with laughter and said that maybe it was Granny. Apparently one of my parents' grandparents had passed in the house and never fully left. How true that is, I don't know. All I do know is that that thing scared me so badly, I never stepped foot in the attic again. 
That was only my first encounter with this figure, though. But that's a story for another day. For a brief time in my childhood, we lived in a redone train station in the middle of nowhere in New Hampshire. Small little town with like 400 people, but still a few things to do and a decent amount of wealth. So the bottom floor of this building is a super popular local sub and pizza shop, and we lived right over them. I was like nine at the time, and my bedroom had a very old decrepit door Cliché, I know, but it really was like rotted wood. That door led to stairs, which led to the attic. The whole attic was pretty decrepit, honestly. It was like they had never redone that part of the house. Old, creaky, weird smells, all of it. I got terrible vibes from that attic. I was terrified to be in my room alone. I was nine, so I could have just been paranoid because I was interested in paranormal things at the time. But we lived there for a year, and I heard voices of people I knew, knocks on the door from the attic side, and the door would frequently slam itself open. I eventually asked my mom to install a heavy lock on it because it scared me so badly. We got the padlock, and nothing crazy happened. but. It was the same kind that you would put on a school locker. Now that I had that, the door would just shake and shake, like somebody was stuck in there, trying desperately to get out. That continued for a few months with no escalation, just this door that seemed to be alive. Our kitty had found a way to sneak up to the attic and back through a rotted part of the door, and one day we hadn't seen her for a while. We checked up there, and we found my cat, dead in the corner of the attic. We thought maybe it was rat poison that we didn't know was up there, but the vet never found any poison in her system. The vet wrote it off as old age, but she was only five. I guess it's possible, and my mom just didn't want to spend more money trying to find out why it died, but it was still really traumatic. Things just got worse after that night. I started to hear my mom up there, a lot, and I would just assume that she was up there cleaning or something. She would just say pretty normal things, like somebody would if they were talking to themselves, and it was definitely her voice. Sometimes she would ask me stuff, like if I wanted anything at the store, or what I felt like for dinner, if I was going anywhere this weekend, the things she asked me pretty regularly. It was loud and clear not different from her normal speech at all. So I would always answer the questions, but then I wouldn't get any reply. So I'd go up there and I would see that she wasn't up there. And a lot of the time I would find out that she wasn't even home. Eventually I stopped checking to see if she was up there and I stopped replying too. My mom heard it herself twice. She was cleaning my room and she said she heard somebody in the attic and the first time she assumed that it was just somebody down in the pizza shop and that the sound had carried. But the second time, my mom heard herself call my name and then say, I'm back from the store, come help put the stuff away. My mom got scared and finally believed me. It was like a recording of her talking. After we became more aware of it, it just stopped. But there was one more time that we felt it. My mom was cleaning my room, and I heard her yell, no. Then she had a seizure. I called my friend, who called medical support and the cops. I moved out soon after. It was still the weirdest and really the only undeniable paranormal experience that I've ever had to this day. I just moved into my house in the mobile area. It's a two-story house with a huge attic. 
It's not big enough to stand up in, but you can get on your knees up there. To give you some insight, the entrance to the attic is in my bathroom. I have been hearing footsteps up there every morning, even when nobody is home. I have also heard voices in my bathroom, but every time I check to see who it is, nobody's there. The weird thing is that when I went into my mom's room, she said, I'm glad you're staying in here today because yesterday morning I heard this huge boom in the attic. I'm scared to go up there and actually investigate. I lifted the door and I saw a flashlight and face cream, but they're not ours. I also saw what looked like a light at the very end of the attic. I don't know what I should do. At first, I thought all this was paranormal or something, but now I'm confused. Maybe somebody's living up there. The worst part is that the attic has an exit that goes directly outside. So, I'm leaning towards something or someone being in our attic. The thought of it being someone scares me even more. This happened when I was around nine or 10. I was staying the night at my friend Catherine's for the first time. We met the summer before and we'd been inseparable ever since. Cat lived in this old two-story house, surrounded by woods and dirt road. The house itself gave me an uneasy feeling when I first saw it. The shutters were falling off. The paint on the house seemed to be fading. It was an old piece of crap now that I think about it, but at the time, I was excited. I remember walking in after staring at the house for what seemed like 20 minutes. Surprisingly, the inside was a lot nicer than the outside, so I pushed that uneasy feeling down and just shrugged it off as nerves. I remember the smell of the house. I can't pinpoint it, but it was different, like walking into a musty room. I started to walk around, just to explore my surroundings, but I noticed Kat's mom watching me. I simply smiled and waved, but she just stood there, staring at me, wide-eyed. I had never met her before, but why was she staring at me like that? Suddenly, Kat flew around the corner and tackled me. We both fell and started to giggle. I noticed Kat's mom out of the corner of my eye start to turn around and walk off, and she was gone. Fast forward a couple of hours, Kat and I are laying on a beanbag in her room watching Children of the Corn, which, by the way, was one of my favorite movies at the time. I grew up watching horror movies, mostly Stephen King or any movie that my mom was watching at the time. Not her decision, but mine, because I love the feeling that a good horror movie gives you. She felt the same way, and that's why we clicked so much. Anyway, we were sitting here watching this movie, and suddenly the door opposite us slams closed. We both jumped and giggled and brushed it off because, well, we were kids. Until the second time, when it creaked open and slammed again, not seconds after the first time. Now I'm sitting there staring at this door, trying to figure out how in the world it's opening and closing by itself. In the midst of all that, the only other person in this house is Kat's mom, which I figured out earlier in the day was also just a tad creepy. Do you think it's just your mom? I asked, but she just shook her head. Are you sure? I asked again, but this time she said something that gave me the chills and still does. She said, my mom isn't home. It's just me and you, silly. I just stared at her, trying to wrap my head around what she had just said. Who leaves their nine-year-old home alone with a friend in a two-story house? Where's your mom? I asked her. She's at work. I giggled, thinking that she was just trying to trick me. No, she's at work. She only works for a couple of hours, so she leaves me here because she trusts me. At this point, I'm just looking at her, and she noticed this look of worry on my face. What's wrong? She asked. 
I said, if your mom is at work, then who was that lady staring at me earlier? As I said this, we heard what seemed like footsteps at the time. But thinking about it now, it sounded more like shuffling in one spot above us. I'm completely scared at this point. Every hair on my neck is standing on end, and I just want to leave. I start to get up when Cat pulled me back down and asked me if I heard that noise. I nodded. It was silent again, until the footsteps were back, but louder and faster. We both stared up at the ceiling, and she grabbed my hand. This happens every day, she whispered. I looked over at her, and I could see true fear on her face. The footsteps stopped, and she looked at me. Her face flushed white. Is there an attic? I asked. She pointed up toward the ceiling. Well, maybe it's just squirrels or birds, I kept thinking over and over. You ever notice when you're really quiet, that's when you can hear almost everything around you? Imagine if you're sitting in a house with your best friend alone at 10 years old, and you hear the giggle of a three-year-old child. Mind you, she has no siblings. We were completely alone. Kat was just as scared as I was. I remember thinking that I just wanted to get out of this house. I grabbed her and ran out the door. At least we would feel safer and less scared outside the house than we would in it. Want to hear a story? Kat asked, pulling my mind back into reality. I nodded. Well, this house used to be a daycare. There was this lady that would watch the kids, and one day she just locked them all in the attic. And then, she hung herself from a rope in the kitchen. They all died because the kids were hungry and thirsty, and no one found them for months afterwards. In this house. My heart started to pound, my eyes wide with fear, and I just looked at her. It's true, she said. I've seen them, the little kids, every day. But I've never seen the lady. But you have, earlier. After she told me this, I don't remember much else except running out the door of her room and making it outside. Cat followed, begging me to stay, but I just had to get out. My stomach felt like knots. I felt as though I had walked into a horror movie, and I just wished the day had never happened. Fast forward years later, that was the last day I had ever seen or heard from Kat. I remember her always coming to play outside at my dad's during the day. I remember what she looked like. I never remembered meeting her parents or seeing them out in public. I'm now 27, and I can't seem to find any proof that she exists. All my friends that I was friends with then, I'm still friends with now, even after all these years. But why not her? I think her scary story might have had some flaws, but I still wonder what happened in that house. I've driven by there maybe 15 times, and I still wonder if maybe she was one of the ones that never made it out. I'm a 24-year-old female, and when I was younger, around five, my family moved into an old house on the upstairs floor. An older couple lived below us. This was a long time ago, and I was little, but I remember this vividly. When we were first moving in, my mom had to go up to the attic, which, coincidentally, had a door in my room. She took me and my younger brother up with her, because I'm assuming she didn't want to leave us unsupervised. I remember not liking it up there. And then, the light turned off, and both my brother and I started screaming about red eyes. I do remember them. It wasn't just one, it was a bunch. It turns out that the light had turned off because it was my dad who didn't think anybody was up there. He turned the light back on when he heard the screaming and asked what was going on. My brother and I were hysterical. 
The thing is that nobody remembers this but me, not even my brother. I would have chalked it up to a bad nightmare or a child's imagination, except that I remember every detail. And then we found out some of the history in the house. It turns out that a mother had actually drowned her child up there. My parents had experiences there as well, but they didn't tell us until later, of course. I feel like that house was the beginning of my acknowledgement, or at least awareness, of the paranormal. And I'll never forget that attic. I would like to preface this by saying that typically I don't believe in the paranormal, but I can find no reasonable explanation as to what is causing this. Hopefully, somebody is able to offer any ideas as to what this might be. Before my parents bought our house, the entryway to the attic used to be in what is now my closet. It got sealed up with boards and there's no way to get in there now, at least not through my room. Instead, you have to use stairs that you can bring down in the hallway in order to get up there. So there shouldn't be anything in my closet or in the area above my closet in the attic. Yet I can hear a distinctive sound of something scratching in there. I looked through the closet and it's not all that big. You can barely fit two people inside of it. And I can't find what's making that noise. The only way into the attic is through those stairs and they're in the hallway, like I said, outside of my door. I would have to have heard somebody bring them down. They squeak. Also, the attic is pretty much filled with insulation, making it virtually impossible to walk around up there. So what's making the noise? We had exterminators go up there and look, and there was no evidence of any animals. I wouldn't know how any animals would get there anyway, since it's basically blocked off from the rest of the house, and nobody's been up there in years. But the noise continues, and it's very loud, and it keeps me awake. I can hear it, even when I have headphones on with the volume all the way up. It sounds like something is trying to get out. So my family and I moved into a new house, which is a two by four house. It used to have an attic, but it's been sealed off. After a couple of months into living in this house, sometimes I would be watching TV and hear scratching from the roof. I just played it off as birds are very common where I live. After about three weeks, the scratching got worse and more frequent. It's like something's trying to scratch its way out of the roof. The attic entrance thing is above the outside of my sister's room. One day, my sister tells my dad that the seal is open. My dad gets confused because it was supposed to be sealed off. My dad goes to close it and realizes that it's really hard to open and close, so whatever opened it had to be strong. And that's when I started to get skeptical. The same night, I went to get some snacks from the fridge. I opened it to find out that they were gone. I figured that my siblings must have eaten them. In the morning, my parents are going on and on about a missing cake. That cake was supposed to be for my niece's birthday. They asked if I had anything to do with it, and I said no, along with my siblings. I was getting really suspicious about the attic. So one day, I built up the courage to go check it out. Note that I am probably the most paranoid person in the world, so I was scared for my life, but my curiosity got the best of me. I get the ladder, a torch, and a knife just in case. I open the thing up, and I shine my torch to see nothing. But as I search more, I see the cake, empty snack packets, dirty clothes, and a short, dark silhouette that freezes in its spot. Immediately I bold and scream for my parents and I tell them everything. They tell me to stay in my room. They go up and check, but he was gone. I am still shaken up 
about that moment, and I get nightmares from it to this day. We've since moved from that house and haven't had any more issues like that, and we live a normal, non-scary life, but I think that day will live with me forever. I'm pretty sure my roommate's house is haunted, but they don't believe in ghosts or souls very much, so they don't think much of the weird things that happened around here. You can clearly hear footsteps in the attic. I used to live in an apartment, so you can definitely tell what different sounds you hear. With that, they are very distinctly the footsteps of someone pacing in the attic. There's only one way in or out of it in my roommate's room, so I know it isn't some squatter or something like that. Things in the house move around on their own, too. It happens in front of my friend and I a lot, to the point where we're kind of used to it. Even though we're used to it, though, I would be more at peace with it if I knew more about the spirits here. Any attempt to contact them has failed, so I assume they just don't want to talk. I haven't had any negative encounters with them, though. The worst I've had is probably knocking over some stuff on the couch. Still, I just want to know what I'm living with. Is that too much to ask? Over the course of two years, I've had weird dreams about a very specific creature lurking in the attic. It always felt malevolent. Now I don't know if it's an actual thing or my subconscious messing with me, but it deeply unsettled me in ways that my dreams almost never do. As somebody who is always aware that they're dreaming, even dreams where I'm being hunted down don't scare me, but this does. There have been so many dreams about it, but a few stick in my head. The least threatening one was a dream where I'm playing video games in my room. I glance out of my bedroom door, and I see an arm dangling from the open attic. The hand moves like it's beckoning me to come closer. I don't, because, obviously, but I watch it. It never leaves the attic, but it keeps trying to get me to go to it. Another dream, I'm in a house I've never been in. My sister and nieces are in this house with me, and I get the impression that this thing is threatening my family. I'm angry, so I get vocally aggressive. I get my family out of there and go back to confront the thing. I see it, for the first time in all the dreams that I've had. It was a woman with light purple skin and dreadlocks. I don't remember how this dream ended, but there were more dreams after, never including my family again, just me. The most intense encounter I had was a dream where the attic was right above the bed I was sleeping in. I was lying there, very aware that it was watching me. I figured if I ignored it, it would go away. Wrong. It slowly pulled the covers off of me. After a few minutes of lying there, cold, Trying to decide if it was safe to pull the blanket back up, it grabs me by the throat and lifts me up about a foot off the bed and starts choking me. I felt like my lungs were going to burst when it let go and let me fall back onto the bed, gasping for breath. I don't know how many dreams I've had since this one, but I know it's been at least a year since I dreamt about it. I'm very uneasy around addicts now, and I always expect to look up and see it again when I pass underneath one, awake or not. Even right now, I keep throwing glances at the attic door right outside my bedroom. Nothing's there, of course, but it's still on my mind. If this thing is not my subconscious and it's an actual entity, I have no idea what it could be. In my limited experience with the paranormal, I've never encountered anything that felt malevolent before just this. My hope is that either my brain just decided it wanted to be terrified of addicts, or that this thing got bored with me and left me forever.
About two years ago, my mom told me to go to the attic to put away some decorations from Halloween. I made a few rounds when all of a sudden I noticed a cat out of the corner of my eye. It had no body or head, just white ears, legs, and a tail. When I told my mom about it, she went to the attic to try to find it, but she found nothing. The other time I believe that I encountered it was when I was walking to my parents' room. I started to hear a cat screaming at the door of the attic. It sounded like a kitten or a young cat. None of my cats scream like what I heard. I opened the door and the screaming stopped, and there was no cat. When I told my mom about the screaming, she went up to find my oldest cat under the guest bed and nowhere near the door. Also, the cat that I saw didn't look like any of our cats, even from the parts I could see. I'm not sure if it's a spirit of my neighbor's cat that died a couple of years ago, or something else, but it's definitely weird. I have a weird story to tell you, but I promise that it's true. This happened about 10 years ago. It was at night. My older sister and I were on the second floor, spending the evening with our oldest brother and his wife. I can't recall what we were chatting with them about, but after a while, about 10 o'clock, my sister and I decided that it was time to go to sleep. We're heading downstairs. My brother has a switch right next to his main front door, into the stairs, that controls the light of the attic, where the stairs come to an end. We usually just put useless stuff there. It's a very small room. The rest of it is just flat, empty roof. So as we're heading down, we notice that this light was on in the attic, so I switched it off. Then, both my sister and I heard the exact voice of my mom saying, Turn on that light, I'm up here. Now, we were both certain that it was my mom and that it was coming from upstairs, so we didn't say anything and I turned it back on. We headed downstairs and that's when we both were totally shocked. As we opened the door to find my mom drinking tea with my other brother and the TV on, we froze, unable to move or speak. My mom noticed that something strange was going on, so she asked us what was wrong. After a moment of silence, we explained what happened. She didn't say anything, but told us to go to sleep. Of course, I couldn't. I kept thinking about what had happened the entire night. Who or what made that sound, and how did it do it? I mean, among all voices, the one of my mom is the one that I know the best, the one I grew up with, so how could it mimic it? well enough to fool both my sister and I. To this day, whenever I ask my sister if she remembers what happened, she says, yes, and then immediately changes the subject. Almost every single night, I walk up to the attic to chill in there or whatever, and I've never stumbled into anything weird. Just that one instance, but who knows? I don't know if there's anything bad about this, but it's freaking me out anyway. In the place that I'm living in, we don't have an attic. At least that's what my parents keep telling me. But once in a while, there's something that's above me that keeps following me whenever I move. If I move to the hallway and to my bathroom and wait a little, I can hear loud creaking and footsteps above me, moving in the same direction and stopping right above my head. This started off small, and I thought the place was just an old house. But it's just so loud now that it feels like somebody's up there. The noises are way too loud to be a small animal's. Also, I don't know if it's related, but one night when I was on my computer in my dark room, I didn't see anything, but I could tell that there was something staring at me to my right. 
My brain screamed at me not to look, but that feeling wouldn't go away for hours. When I eventually tried heading off to sleep, putting my computer to the side for a light source, for some reason I decided to put up my legs, and I swear I felt something trying to pull or push them down hard. Nothing like that has happened again since that night, but part of me feels like it may happen again. Another thing that's weird too is that I haven't heard the sound when it wasn't physically possible to, like when I listened to music or had my ears blocked. So I think it's more natural than supernatural, but I don't know. Either way, it freaks me out. My brother used to live in the attic of the house we grew up in. It had an extremely dark and suffocating vibe. My brother went crazy in there. He would hear voices. He would be paralyzed, unable to move. He got an EEG done, but they couldn't find anything wrong with him. But after that, he had major behavioral issues. He had to go and live in this boarding school place for kids who had behavior problems. Unfortunately, he ended up ending his life. This was 25 years ago, so I have had time to heal a lot, but it still is hard. One day, I was on the second floor, and I heard dripping coming from the attic. I didn't want to go up there, but I needed to know what the cause of the dripping was. In the hallway, there was one hallway that connected three rooms. There was a random big puddle of water, it felt wrong, completely out of place. The ceiling above it looked normal, and the dripping stopped once I came to the puddle. I never heard it again. Nothing was wrong with the roof. My mom called a plumber, and there were no pipes near that area. It was one of many strange things to happen in that house, but it was definitely the strangest, since there was physical evidence of something. Who knows what, though? I live in an apartment on the very last floor. There's a little attic space in between my ceiling and the roof of the building. There's nothing in this attic, I don't have access to it and neither does anybody else. The door of the attic is locked and only the homeowners association has the key to it. The thing is, I hear noises like somebody is walking and stepping really hard on the floor, things falling, scratches, and it's almost like somebody is pushing heavy furniture. Again, this place is completely empty, at least it should be. The noises can be heard at any time of the day, morning, afternoon, and, of course, at night. The only part of the apartment where you can hear the noises from is my room, though. I don't know what it is. In the home that I live in, there are multiple floors, and when I sleep in my normal bedroom, beneath the floor under the attic, I don't care if my door is open or closed, but I hate when I have to go to sleep with the door to the staircase up to the next floor open. I just don't want it that way. It feels wrong. There's also a bedroom where the floorboards creak every night. I'm always first with going to sleep, so there's plenty of light and relatives passing by. What kind of feels like a safe haven? Well, one time I was renovating my room, and I had to sleep on the floor beneath the attic. Basically, the stairs go up to a large room, from where every other room can be accessed. You always need to go through this room to get to it. This room is also the entrance to the attic. I never liked leaving a lit room after dark, 
when I'm on my own. I even heavily dislike entering the house when nobody's on the ground floor. Luckily, you can just activate a time switch on the staircase that switches off the light located there. 10 minutes. And use this light to get to the room where I had to sleep in. I would activate the light switch there and close the door. So I was in there, and when I wanted to go to sleep, I would leave the door open a bit. I have a cat, and he often comes in at night to sleep on my bed. That's the reason that the door to the staircase has to stay open. I opened the door, switched off the light, put the cover in front of my window, which my mom told me to do, and went to sleep. The room was pitch black with that cover on. I'm lying in bed, just like normal, and suddenly I felt terrified. There was no real reason for it. I was just thinking about some random stuff that didn't scare me at all. And then I just froze like I couldn't move anymore. And that's when I heard breathing. At the same rhythm of mine, but coming from a corner. I held my breath, but the other breathing continued. I jumped up and felt my way to the door with my eyes closed. I switched the light on and closed the door. And I just sat there. Asking for another bedroom wasn't an option, so after about a half an hour... I decided to try again with the door closed, while repeating in my head that it was just the wind. I didn't hear the breathing sound again, though the wind sounded very similar. At the third night, I forgot the covers, and the window started creaking, like something heavy was on the wood around it. Eventually, it stopped and I could sleep like usual. But I had a really bad feeling every time that I turned those switches off and hurried to bed and I would take any other bedroom as long as it wasn't on that floor. It's like the closer I sleep to the attic, the worse I feel. So this happened a few years ago, when I was around the age of 18. A group of friends and I were staying at this friend's late grandparents' house in a ghost town in the mountains of Italy. The house is built on two floors, with a small courtyard on the front and stairs connecting the two floors on the outside of the house, accessible from the courtyard. When this happened, we were chilling out in the courtyard. Some other people and I were facing the entrance of the house, and we were able to see the inside of the second floor specifically the one central corridor with the door to the different rooms. Two people got inside the house and went into the bathroom, which is at the end of the corridor, on the right. A few minutes later, they got out and called for us, asking if somebody had opened the trap door leading to the attic, which is located at the very end of the corridor, right outside the bathroom. That's where things got weird. There was no way for someone to open the trap door, as you would have needed a ladder to get there. The ceilings are quite high, and the only ladder could be found at the ground floor, locked behind the front doors. Also, all of us who were facing the front of the house and looking directly to the inside should have noticed if someone or something was moving. And similarly, the two people in the bathroom should have noticed something as well, as the bathroom has one of those opaque glass doors. As soon as we all realized that there was no way someone in the group could have done it, we all got inside the house, but nobody really had the courage to look into the attic. So we just closed the door and tried to go on with our day. But everybody kept feeling quite uneasy for the whole time, seeing weird shadows or hearing steps coming from the attic. I suppose it could have easily been power of suggestion. I don't know how we did it, but somehow we all fell asleep. In the morning, after some friends finally decided to go check the attic, the room was completely bare. The only thing that they found there was a hammer, standing on its head in the middle of the room. It's fair to say that only creeped us all out more, and it really didn't make us want to look into the attic or whatever had happened more than we needed to. So again, we all just got out of the attic, closed the door, and we were very glad to go back to the city later that day.
there's this little access to the attic in the place that we currently live. We never noticed it until our roommate pointed it out trying to mess with us. So my best girlfriend and I were doing laundry one day in the garage. The access is located in the garage above the door. I was staring up at it as she was sorting laundry. It moved open slightly and I told her. Then it moved closed and I told her. She looked at it and we laughed all creeped out and then we got paranoid. So we went inside and we were still talking about it. I creeped her out talking about those videos of people living in others' attics. Well, we turned the air off and waited for it to go off. We stood in the garage looking at this thing for like five minutes. We were going to go inside because nothing was happening. And just as we said that, it flung open. Fast. We ran inside screaming. The boys swear that it's from opening and closing the garage door, but we weren't opening the door when it happened, so we're still pretty weirded out by it. I'm still not sure what's going on with it, if anything, but I just thought I'd share. Some of my friends and I ventured into an old abandoned hospital that's pretty securely boarded up. We climbed through a broken window that was maybe eight inches at most. It was nighttime and most of the large hospital campus is abandoned, with welded doors and boarded windows. And though people had obviously gotten in before us, there was much less graffiti and damage than we're used to seeing in these places. The campus has several buildings and we were clueless as to which one we were in, until we found a morgue in the basement and medical equipment strewn about. We didn't hear anything or see anything out of the ordinary, except for the light in the attic. The building had no power, yet we could see from the top floor that a light was on above us. We couldn't get into the attic as the only staircase up there had a chained and bolted door it was a little odd, but I'm not sure if it was paranormal. I suppose it could have been a solar-powered light, but why? Would the bulb ever go out? It didn't scare us off, we did continue wandering around for a while, and like I said, nothing crazy happened. But it's still very strange to me that there was a light on in a powerless attic. My parents own a sprawling three-story manor built in 1912. This house has a finished bedroom in the attic, which is mildly weird on its own. But when I turned 14 and was going into high school, I begged them to empty the junk out and let me live there. I thought it would be totally awesome, like having an apartment away from the rest of my family. They agreed I could do it and I got to paint it and put in new carpet and fill it with the furniture that I picked out. All vintage, because that's what I like. The place was awesome, but the door didn't quite fit into the jam anymore, so it would swing open on its own. I was not cool with having the door open to the rest of the attic in the middle of the night. I shut the door as tightly as it would go, and before bed, I jammed it shut with my desk chair. I mean, I really wedged it in there. I had my sister test, and the door would not budge from the attic side. Cool. I went to sleep. The next morning I woke up feeling refreshed, until I noticed that the desk chair was tucked back under the desk, the door was shoved all the way open, so hard that it had actually dented the wall, and I had no explanation. To this day, all present family members swear they didn't do it and I think I would have had to have heard them anyhow. I decided the ghosts in the attic didn't like me shutting them out. For the duration of my time living in the attic, several years, I left the door open, and nothing else really happened, so I guess all they wanted was some freedom. Still, definitely freaked me out.
I live alone, unless you want to include my cat, and then I live with a cat. I have a house with an attic conversion, but since it's just me, it's basically an empty room. I think the previous tenant had used it as a bedroom. Obviously, when I first moved in, I did go up there just to have a snoop around. There are two light switches for the room, one at the bottom of the stairs, and one that is a long string that you pull which is right in the middle of the room. There's a door at the top of the stairs that I always keep shut. I close every door behind me. An open door really bugs me. After living in this house for about three months, I noticed that the door was open and the light was on. I could see the light on the wall opposite the door. No big deal. I obviously forgot to shut the door and turn off the light, so I go and do that. About two weeks on, I arrive home from work. It's early January and it's dark out. I can see the window to the room from outside, and I can see that the light is on. My first thought is, ugh, I've been robbed. I barge into my home, quickly sweep the first two floors expecting to find someone, but there's no one there. Ah, oh, they must still be up there, I thought. So I fly up the stairs, and the door is shut, but the light is still on. I swing the door open, and nothing. I will say that I'm very skeptical about stories when I hear feeling of dread or felt I was being watched, but I had both of those. I had this horrific feeling that I really wasn't alone up there, but it's a simple, empty box of a room. I try my best to shrug it off, I turn the light off, and I shut the door. I've been living there nearly seven months now, and since that day, I get the same feeling when I walk past the stairs to the attic. Day or night, the light is on at least twice a week, but now, it switches itself off after a while. Recently, I've started hearing very loud bumps coming from the attic, which is right above my bedroom. The first time I heard it, I naturally assumed that somebody was trying to get in through the attic window, so I ran up there, but nothing. Lastly, my cat, who is very tiny and during the night stays downstairs, refuses to go up there, and has actually done the whole arched back hissing thing at the door. It could be because he's just out of sorts, but given the situation, and the fact that he never hisses at anything ever, it really freaks me out. This is the first time I think I've encountered something related to the paranormal. If anybody can help me understand what this might have been, please tell me. Before I start my unexplained encounter, I would like to say that I live in a duplex with my roommate and friend who goes to college with me. The duplex isn't that big, and neither is the attic. It's small enough to where an average sized person would have trouble even crawling through it. I also have one camera on the front window, and one on the back. So on January 24th, I had suddenly been awoken at about 4.30 in the morning. I checked my phone. I usually wake up about 7 or 8 a.m. so I can get to work on time. At first I didn't really understand why I was awake, so I decided to just try and fall asleep again. But after a few seconds, I heard what sounded like very loud footsteps walking above me. I was too afraid to get out of bed, so I just laid there. My first thought was that it must have been an illusion, but now I know this isn't true. When I suddenly woke up a few hours later, I went out to eat breakfast with my roommate. We asked how each other's sleep was and I decided to bring up the fact that I had heard something at about 4.30. He responded by saying he had heard something at exactly 4.34 in the morning. At this point we were a little bit freaked out, so we decided to open the hatch into the attic. Like I said before, there was really no way anybody could fit up there because it's just too small. We decided to look at the camera footage, but there were no signs of any motion or anything out of the ordinary, other than just leaves blowing around. 
Our only thought was that somebody had come from one of the sides of the house and climbed onto the roof for some reason. I asked my neighbors if they had seen anything, and they said no, so that kind of eliminated one side. But I also knew that it wasn't the other side, due to the fact that we sleep on that side and would most likely wake up easily if there was a disturbance. Now we're stuck, believing that it's something paranormal. Since then, we haven't heard a noise, but it's only been a few days as I'm writing the story. And before anybody says anything, it is not an animal. We know what those sound like. These are footsteps. But like I said, it's pretty much impossible that somebody with footsteps, physical anyway, could be walking around up there. Anyway, if you have any ideas as to what it might be, let me know. I've had many paranormal experiences growing up, all very different. On this night, I saw something that I never thought I could see with my own eyes. I slept over at a friend's house one night, and that night, as I was laying on the floor next to her bed, my head was by her feet, facing the stairs leading down to the second floor. I closed my eyes. I could feel somebody staring at me. Their presence was dark, and something told me to open my eyes. There he stood, at the top of the attic stairs. I couldn't see his face or his body, just the outline of him. A completely dark shadow of a man. He stood over us, staring a hole through my soul, and I, completely unaware of how unreal he was, couldn't move or blink. I could only stare back. It wasn't until what seemed like minutes had passed that I was finally able to close my eyes again, and somehow I fell asleep. The next morning, I had asked my friend if her siblings had one of their guy friends over, being that one of her sister's rooms was next to hers in the attic. She said no, that nobody but us had been in the attic that night. I was confused. I told her about the man I had seen, and she turned pale white. She goes on to say how she felt like somebody was holding her down, she couldn't move or breathe. Later on that day, her older sister, who we evidently told the story to, had told us about the man who had lived and died in that house years before their mother bought it. A man in his early 30s had committed a murder of his children, three daughters, and then himself. Since then, he has haunted the house and would bother the females in the house. All she knew about that man was just that, what he had done. Nobody knows why he would do all those things, but what I saw was very real, and I'll never forget it. My dad works for a contracting company in St. Louis, Missouri. The building's interior is exactly the same as it was in the 1960s, all except for the dust and deterioration. The actual date of construction is 1910. It's only a five-story tall building. It's nothing immensely big. It was previously used as a law firm, but when the firm left, they decided not to take anything with them. There were tons of law books, paintings, desks, etc. But the basement. Back in 1960, they started to renovate it, but never finished. So the basement is an extremely dilapidated 1910s, paint falling off, broken glass ridden, rusting freight elevator, deadly tetanus infested nail cesspit. But my dad and I went in there anyway. Keep this in mind. My dad coaches boxing as a hobby and he's huge, all muscle. He's fought all his life. And even he is scared of that basement. Every time we go down there, something is different. The first time I remember going down there, the plaster on the walls of a hallway had fallen, and I mean all of it. The whole hallway was stripped down to its bare structure. I assumed, of course, it was because of the renovation, but my dad said, 
what's all this shit? Wasn't here before. So we go down the hallway, and yeah, in and of itself, it's nothing really special. But there was a metal chair in the middle of this dark hallway, and for whatever reason, it just freaked me out. My dad turned on the lights, and they worked for a second, but then they all busted. Some of them just fizzled out, probably because of how old they were. So down the hall, there was a boiler room. It contained this rubberized trench coat, rubberized to avoid stains, and a bowling ball bag. Inside the bowling ball bag was a cleaver with what I assume was a deer bone handle. After that, we left. A few weeks later, we came back down and all the plaster on the floor was gone. We went to the end of the hallway and the boiler room door was closed. Maybe we closed it, but I don't remember doing that at all. It doesn't seem like our priority would have been to close that door when we were getting out of there. By the way, nobody has the key to the building except my dad. He and I are the only ones to enter the building, ever. At the end, there was a T-shaped intersection. On the wall, there were three identical pictures of the same exact priest with a deadpan expression. His eyes were glazed over like he was possessed or couldn't see or something. We came back after a few months, near Christmas. We only made it down the steps and immediately left. There was a Christmas tree, little lights blinking, and a Santa Claus doll with the most indescribably creepy grin I've ever seen in my life. Something was definitely going on in that basement. Every night, I walk down the stairs to the basement and then into my gaming room to unwind with some video games. As I reach the bottom of the stairs, I turn on the light, but I keep it dimmed just so I can make my way to my room. At about midnight, it's time to go to sleep. So I open the door of my gaming room to find the lights completely turned off. I deliberately keep the switch at halfway and when I go to the staircase, they're always pulled all the way down. I've always thought that it was my wife who would come downstairs and shut them off. I politely asked her why she would shut the lights off and she replied, I've never gone downstairs to shut the lights off, not even once. For context, I've seen shadowy images run by in the basement. I dismissed it as being fatigue However, when my niece was just three years old, she said that there was a boy with red eyes on the staircase. We thought it was just her childhood imagination. Then when my son was two to three years old, he ran into my arms after staring at the staircase. I asked him what was wrong. And finally he said, there's spooky with red eyes. Could entities actually physically manipulate the light switch? I can't explain what's going on. In September, my partner and I signed the lease on a dream apartment. I was ridiculously excited and I kept telling everybody I knew all about it, to the point where I was probably pretty annoying. One day, a friend of mine came to visit me at work, and of course, I told her the news of our new place. She asked me where it was, and when I told her the location, she turned pale and seemed uncomfortable at best and flat out scared at worst. She asked to see a picture of the inside. And when I showed her, she let out a long sigh of relief, then proceeded to tell me one of the creepiest stories I have ever heard. It turns out that about five years ago, she had lived in the house directly next to mine with her sister and boyfriend. Starting almost immediately when they moved in, 
They began hearing noises out in the kitchen area at night when they were sleeping. And occasionally, they woke up to the cabinets or kitchen tools being opened or scattered around. Eventually, they started to hear what sounded like kids talking in low voices in the kitchen at night, occasional crying and crashes that sounded far off, but still somewhere in the house. Around this time, my friend and her sister started to fight a lot, and she said that they'd both been feeling extremely irritable about everything. Their house was broken into while they were all at work one night, but nothing was stolen except for some cheap costume jewelry. There was cash, valuable jewelry, and designer clothing in the house, but all of it was left untouched. Later in the same month, they received a visit from the cops, who said a neighbor had called about screaming and crying coming from the house and had reported that they had left their children alone when they went out. They didn't have kids. The cops were called a few other times and finally got a search warrant. Somehow, they ended up finding a trap door under the kitchen window area that was covered in a layer of leaves and dirt. They found out that it was the remains of a very old root cellar. I live in one of the oldest cities in America, and much of the structures are built on top of older structures. That's not the surprising part. One thing led to another in the search down there, and the police recovered some very old skeletal remains of two children. Nobody seemed to know if the skeletons or the root cellar were there first. During all of this, my friend and her sister broke their lease and moved out of there immediately, as they were terrified to be there any longer. I went through with my lease and I live in the building next door to where all this happened. My apartment is an old adobe market that was converted into an apartment in the 70s and it's been an absolute dream to live here. No scary vibes or noises at all. The couple who live in that house now seem pretty nice and keep to themselves. We all have high adobe privacy walls and coyote fences, and I feel tempted to see if they know about all of this. But I'm afraid it might make them uncomfortable if I approach them about it. In any case, that was the wildest story I've ever heard. First, a little background information that's important to fully understand the story. My mother's sister and her husband have a house in Colorado that has a finished basement. The basement has a fully furnished bedroom, bathroom, a sort of living room area with a couch and TV, and a little kitchenette as well. I grew up visiting my three cousins, aunt, uncle, and grandparents every summer from the time I was five up until two or three years ago. I'm 21 now. The basement became more or less the guest room, so that's where I would stay whenever I would visit, so that I could have a little space of my own. That and the fact that their cat rarely ever went down to the basement and I am severely allergic to cats. This particular event occurred around the time that I was 17 or 18, and my younger cousin, I'll call her Megan, was around 16 or 15. The night started totally normal. We all had dinner, listened to music, watched something, and then at around midnight, we all headed off to bed. Because of a different experience I had down there a few years prior, I was really nervous about staying in the basement alone. So, my wonderful cousin Megan took one for the team and had been staying in the basement with me for the duration of my trip. We had been chilling in the living room of the basement for about three hours, drawing and just hanging out when it all started. I was in the process of explaining the premise of a show I had started when we heard what sounded like an old man clearing his throat coming from the bathroom. I knew it wasn't her, 
since I was maintaining eye contact with her the whole time, and her mouth hadn't opened at all, and she also knew it wasn't me since I was in the middle of speaking. And of course, neither of us are old men. We both paused and then confirmed that we had both heard the cough. Our minds immediately went to, there's a man hiding in the bathroom, since they had had some people in the past attempt to break in through the basement windows. I wanted to go upstairs and get one of her older siblings to check it out, but Megan insisted on checking it out ourselves. We went to the bathroom, turned on the lights, and saw that it was completely empty. There was, however, a linen closet which had the door closed. She opened the door and we saw what honestly looked like the shape of a man trying to hide under some blankets. Megan immediately reared her leg back and kicked the blanket with full force, only to discover that it was just some blankets spilling over the lower shelves that we had forgotten existed. As Megan tended to her now stubbed toes, we heard that same cough come from what sounded like the entrance to the basement. We slowly crept out of the bathroom, looked around the basement to no avail, and without a word, both started packing up all of our stuff, like our sketchbooks and my laptop. And rather than leave the basement, we just went to the bedroom and locked the door. There was a giant floor length mirror in the room which we used to bar the door. We did all of this in complete silence some weird primal understanding going on between us that we had to be as quiet as humanly possible. As we tiptoed around the room, we heard what sounded like shuffling outside the door. At that point, I was still somewhat convinced that there was a living person in the basement with us since the sounds were so clear and the feeling of there being someone else down there was so strong. Megan settled onto the bed while I sat against the wall next to the vanity, charging my phone. We were texting each other rather than speaking, since that pressure of being silent was still incredibly intense. We decided to each spam text her siblings, trying to wake them up to come down to our rescue, but there was no reply. Megan even texted her mom, but still, nobody woke up. I texted my mom, who did wake up, but all she said was to call the police if we were certain that somebody was down there with us. While we knew that there was something in the basement with us, we didn't know if it was actually someone who had broken in, and neither of us wanted to risk bothering the police for something dumb. After about an hour, Megan's phone started dying, so we decided to switch spots. For some reason, neither of us really understood. We were so terrified of making any sort of noise that we made sure to walk on our tiptoes and take steps at the exact same time to minimize the amount of sound we made. At one point, Megan started smothering me with a pillow because I had an allergy attack and kept sneezing. With the both of us now situated, we tried to relax still being kind of terrorized by the sounds of someone shuffling around outside the door and the occasional cough. At around five, we heard what sounded like a small animal fall into the grate that also acted as a window for the basement bedroom and begin running around. The rocks at the bottom were moving and bouncing off the window, and then it went silent. About 10 minutes later, it sounded like another animal had fallen in and the sound started up again. This cycle continued for pretty much that entire hour. The entire time that all of this was happening, Megan and I were terrified. It was like that feeling you get right before your car gets rear-ended or right as you're about to go down a giant roller coaster hill. Just plain fear, anxiety, and the subtle feeling that something is just not right. It doesn't sound like much, but for some reason, Megan and I were just absolutely scared out of our minds. We both understood that we were not alone in that basement, and whatever was down there with us was actively trying to freak us out. We were saved at around seven. The sun started to rise, and we heard my uncle get up to take the dogs out. 
Neither Megan nor I had slept at all, and we suddenly felt exhausted as the adrenaline that had been fueling us the entire night seemed to die out. The sounds hadn't stopped, but they had significantly decreased as the hours passed. Now, hearing her dad up and about, we felt a little bit safer leaving the comfort of the bedroom. We quietly and quickly moved the mirror back to its space on the wall, and then, on the count of three, unlocked the door and ran to the stairs. We didn't stop to look around or turn off any of the lights, even though by that point the basement was fully illuminated with the sunlight and the lights that we had left on when vacating the living room. We booked it up the stairs and came to a screeching halt in the kitchen where her dad was making coffee. We immediately told him everything and begged him to check out the basement, still not fully convinced that it wasn't a normal person. He checked and sure enough, nothing had been tampered with and the entire basement was empty. Megan made some ramen for breakfast since we were starving and just wanted something comfortable. And after eating, she went upstairs to tell her mom. I stayed downstairs, eating and trying to come to terms with what I had just experienced. Her mom didn't believe her at first, but when I told the same story and Megan almost started crying from not being believed, she changed her mind. My aunt was resistant to the idea that her house, specifically the basement, was haunted. But then, later that year, she experienced it for herself. The main thing I remember from this whole ordeal was the fear. It was so raw and intense and there was just this weird knowledge that we weren't alone down there and that whatever it was, was not good. Megan and my other cousin theorized that it was Theodore, the name they had given the resident ghost that stays down there, but I don't think so. Nothing like that has happened to anyone else ever again, and it's just not what we know to be Theodore's style. I don't know. I don't know what was down there with us, or who. I don't know why they were there or what they wanted, really. But there was something with us that night, and it scared me in a way that I have never, ever felt since. This happened in the summer of 2019 when I went to visit my cousins in India. They had recently built a new kitchen and two modernized bedrooms in the basement. Initially, I thought it was a sweet gesture that my cousin allowed me to stay in his room and make it my own for the month that I stayed there. Little did I know that I would soon be encountering some unexplainable things. This will be a pretty long story as I want to explain it thoroughly enough so you can imagine the situation clearly. The first incident, the home alone incident. I was told by my cousin that he needed to go out with some friends and would return in the next 15 minutes or so. No one else was at home except for the maid. I tend to get vibes of areas pretty quickly and it's safe to say that the basement made me feel pretty uneasy. I was hesitant. However, I had nothing to do upstairs and the TV was downstairs in my room. So I went down there with my cousin's dog. The room felt incredibly cold, which is strange for a room in India in the summer. I hadn't turned on the air conditioning and nobody else had been downstairs, not even the maid. I went to get the remote from the cabinet under the TV. It was a pretty loose cabinet. Sometimes it would swing open by itself. So it felt strange that I was unable to open it despite tugging on it pretty hard. The dog began to shuffle backward whilst staring at something in front of me next to the cabinet. There was nothing there, not even an insect. The entire month that I was there, this was the sole time that I ever heard a sound from that dog. He's typically pretty quiet, but the sound he made wasn't a bark. It's hard to describe, but it's almost like he was in pain, almost screaming. It wasn't a pleasant sound at all. 
The dog then ran back upstairs. He's quite a lazy dog, so it was kind of odd to see him run at such a speed. Suddenly, the room went back to its normal warm temperature and the cabinet swung open. I nearly fell on the floor from the force that I had applied to the cabinet to try to open it. I put on a movie and I tried to calm down. My cousin came in around a few minutes later and I told him what happened. He was also very confused by the noise which the dog made and he opened the cabinet in front of me with just two fingers, trying to show me how easy it was to open. The second incident, the anklets. My cousin's sister and I were both having a late night talk one night at around two or 3 a.m. Everyone else was asleep upstairs in their rooms. Suddenly, we both heard anklets moving upstairs and then we heard it getting louder. It was going down the stairs and coming toward us. Initially, I got excited, thinking it was my other cousin's sister who decided to join us. However, I was confused as to why she would suddenly decide to join in, despite previously saying she didn't want to, and hence going to sleep a few hours prior. My cousin sister's next to me, we'll call her M. M is very brave and jokey, so I was incredibly concerned when I saw how shocked she looked. I asked her what was wrong, and she said, no one in the house wears anklets, and they don't own any either. I thought it was an intruder. At this point, the anklet noise had just reached the bottom of the stairs and was turning around the bend to enter the kitchen, which was located directly outside the room. I stood behind the wall with M and we were ready to trap whoever this person was. The anklets stepped up the step and the sound stopped directly outside the door where we stood. There was no one there. We were incredibly confused, so we checked all over the basement and turned on all of the lights. We then called my other cousin's sister, but she was still sleeping, so she didn't pick up. We went straight back into bed, and I'm pretty sure I didn't sleep that night. Incident 3. The Blanket This happened two nights after the anklet incident. I had finished watching yet another movie and was ready to sleep at around 3 a.m. This time, my cousin's brother said he would sleep on a mattress which was laid across the floor by the end of the bed in order to make me feel better if I was scared since M was out that night and I was too traumatized by the anklet incident. My cousin's brother was already asleep and I was about to sleep as well. I'm sure many of you can relate to me when I say that I sleep by curling up. So I did just that and laid on my side. As my eyes were getting heavier, I began to notice that my blanket was being pulled down. Of course, this couldn't have been me as I was curled up and my hands were gripping onto the blanket at the top near my face. I thought it was the dog, but then I remembered he went to sleep hours ago, upstairs. Everyone's doors are shut upstairs when they sleep, so there was no way that he could have come downstairs, and I would have noticed if he did. Then I thought maybe it was my cousin pulling on it in his sleep. I was too tired, so I tried to sleep again. The tugging happened again, but this time more aggressively. The blanket was actually snatched out of my hand from the force. I also felt pressure at the end of the bed, as if someone was sitting there. I turned my torch on, but nothing was there. You could see that the blanket had been pulled as it was very uneven on that side. I tried to wake my cousin up, but he wasn't anywhere near that end of the bed, and he was in deep sleep. I called my other cousin on the phone. He lives about a half an hour away from that house and I put him on speaker so that we could both shout my cousin's name for him to wake up, but he didn't. Needless to say, I was stuck there and couldn't sleep, so I sat up with the light on for the rest of the night. I pretty much looked like a zombie at this point from lack of sleep. The last incident, but not the least scary, was the face. 
So this happened around a week after the blanket incident. M was sleeping beside me again, as I was far too scared to sleep alone at this point. I had just said goodnight to her, and we were about to fall asleep. Again, this was around 2 or 3 in the morning. I actually started sleeping, but then I felt incredibly uneasy. That feeling like you're being watched. I suddenly woke up and directly stared into the face of something pale. Something or someone, who knows. I couldn't see eyes, but the shape looked like it should have been a face. Despite not seeing eyes, I still felt like I was being watched. I let out a small squeal because I was so scared. My voice just abandoned me. M woke up to see if I was okay as soon as that face disappeared. As soon as I began telling her what I saw, we heard the gate crash outside the room. To put this into perspective, if you walk out of the room and kitchen and continue walking straight within the basement, there are stairs which lead to a heavy metal gate so that you can get onto the main road. There was no one walking around on the streets that night. There usually never is, especially at that time of night. Even if a kid tried knocking on the gate outside, the sound would be too deep for what we heard. The gate crashing sound, which I'm talking about, is the sound it makes if someone were to open it and then slam it shut. Sometimes M's dad leaves for work very early in the morning and returns later in the evening. However, later that day when M and I went upstairs for breakfast, he had just woken up and it wasn't him. Even if it had been, why would he use the basement gate instead of the main door to leave the house, which was upstairs? In conclusion, it was a very weird experience. I don't know what I experienced, honestly, but something was up with that basement. I was never sure whether I should believe in the paranormal or not. Sure, I'd heard strange noises home alone at night, or felt the energy in the house shift to something more sinister in a matter of seconds. But what I experienced in August of 2021 convinced me. It's taken a long time to process what I had experienced. I've mostly tried to pretend that it didn't happen. And to be honest, I really wish it hadn't. For context, Last August, I had moved into the guest bedroom in our basement. I'm 15, and having the entire basement to myself for most of the day and all night was awesome. I immediately began to regret my decision, though, as I discovered how unsettling the energy in my basement is. It's really hard to explain, but it just feels off, especially at night. I was literally always on edge whenever I was down there. Sleeping was quite difficult, as I was never really calm. I often felt an overwhelming presence watching over me, and I was really hating my decision. But I knew my mom would be upset if I changed my mind so soon, so I endured the hell I was living in. I quickly need to describe the layout of my basement so you can understand where everything is taking place. Once you enter my basement, there's a large living area. Attached to that is a hallway that leads to where I've been sleeping. So I woke up at around 1 to 2 in the morning to the sounds of about four voices in the living area of the basement. I could never actually make out what they were talking about, maybe because I had just woken up. But I'm pretty sure they were speaking in another language or maybe very broken English. As I was listening to the voices, I heard quiet footsteps approaching my door. The only way that I was sure they were footsteps was because the floor in our basement, especially in the hallway, is very creaky. I pulled the covers over my head and shut my eyes. I fell asleep almost immediately and nothing else happened that night. I've also felt people touch me in the basement, but Usually, those experiences are comforting, 
I usually believe that to be my father who passed away in 2015, as I've only felt those when I'm sad or angry. Still paranormal, but unrelated to the experience I just told you about. Either way, that experience in the basement terrified me, and I'm still not sure how to explain it. So I'm on staff duty and finishing up. It's 5.05 a.m. The gym opens at five o'clock sharp. I'm supposed to bring the master key over and unlock the gym and sit down here while people PT, since we had a few incidents of misconduct. So I get the key and my things and come down to the basement where the gym is. There are no windows and the lights are on a sensor with a switch. When flipped on, they come on and stay on until the motion sensors go to sleep. Then you have to walk into the center of the room and wave to get them back on. When flipped off, they're off, and that's that. So I open the door and hit the switch, and nothing. It clicks, but no lights come on. So having just watched scary videos all night at staff duty, I prop the door open with some plates by the entrance and get out my phone and turn on the flashlight. I flip the switch in the other direction since they aren't labeled, and in the army up and down might as well be the same thing. It clicks and no light. Now I'm noticing that I can hear the other light on the far side of the room click all on its own. Well, that's not creepy and it may realistically be a short in the shitty wiring. I flip the switch up again and hear the far switch click a half a second later. So light in hand, I decide to find my balls and walk out there and wave at the sensor. I start walking and I'm pretty sure I should be tripping the sensor, but the only light is from the emergency sign. And now across the room by a weight machine is a reflection off the metal like someone's down there with me. I walk back and flip the switch down. This time, I don't hear the other switch click and the lights come on. Bad feelings banished. Victory. Only, I decide to walk back out, carefully watching the sensor. By the time it picks me up, I'm significantly closer to that one weight machine than I was the first time, which means I wasn't in sensor range which means someone, or something else, set off the grid for me. Or maybe it's all just a bug in the wiring. Back when I was still going to high school, I spent the night at my best friend's place. He lived in a basement. I woke up and went to the bathroom. And as soon as I got back to the room and laid back down, I closed my eyes. Then I felt like someone or something was staring at me. I opened my eyes and saw a pale child staring me in the face. His dark eyes felt like they were staring into my soul. I yelled out for my friend, and as soon as he came into the room, the child disappeared. I told him what happened, and of course he didn't believe me. But now he says that apparently everybody who's ever slept in that room has seen him. His girlfriend, his brothers, and me. But he has never seen the boy. To this day, I can still remember what he looks like. I want to start this off by saying that I live in my mom's basement. Many people have said that they think it's haunted. Weird things have happened, like the washer turning on by itself, 
and sometimes even clothes appearing folded when they hadn't been folded previously. That's in the back room, though there's a larger main part that I live in. My bed and TV are set up where our pool table used to be placed when I was younger. In the middle of the night, when everyone else in the house was asleep, I used to hear people playing pool. So that area is no stranger to spirits. When I first moved down there around two months ago, I woke up to a dark figure standing a few feet away from me. It didn't seem threatening. It was just a little weird. I've also had other paranormal experiences. I don't know if they're related to the entities in the basement or what, but I guess I'll share them here too. For instance, yesterday, my YouTube showed numerous profile pictures that weren't mine, but only on my Apple TV and only on the top corner icon when I would click on the profile. It would show my normal one, which is just the standard issued one. But then on the Apple TV, all these other ones appeared. I just stared at it for a minute, confused, then got up to look at the picture and it had something to do with God. I couldn't really read it because of how small the icon was, but it seemed to be some type of Bible verse. Then before my eyes, the profile picture changed again to what looked like a picture of Jesus. So seeing this, I ran to my computer, figuring somebody was on my account and I should probably change my password. But that's when I discovered that the icon on my account there was totally normal. No one knew had logged into my account and there were only three devices on that account, my computer, my Apple TV, and my Xbox. So I once again looked back at the TV and the icon was now different. This time I could actually read it. It said, the power of Christ compels you. This slightly shook me to my core and I ran back to my computer to change my password. Eventually the profile icon went back to normal on its own a few hours later, which was also somehow slightly alarming. Like I said, I don't know if this has anything to do with what's going on in the basement, but my TV's in the basement, so maybe. I hope this made sense. I don't know if anything like this has happened to anyone else, but please let me know if it has. Let me set the scene. I used to own a house near the mountains on the northern side of Colorado. This was a period of time where I had just gotten fired from a job because of pandemic related reasons and was home alone. I lived with my roommate at the time, but he went out to some club that night, leaving me home alone with my dog. I hate to even think of this, and this is the first time I've ever told anybody besides my neighbors. It was around 8 p.m. on a Friday, and I was watching Friends on TV. While watching, I heard what sounded like boxes shuffling around in the basement. My dog immediately noticed this and brought his head up. Our basement wasn't finished, and we had a window down there which wasn't in good shape, so I had just brushed it off thinking that the wind was making noises. After a while, the noises never stopped, I decided to grab my light and head down there with my dog. I grabbed my light from the kitchen and opened the door to the basement. I started walking down the stairs, calling my dog. The only odd thing was that my dog wouldn't come down with me and was making that little high-pitched noise the dogs make when they aren't happy or whatever. He refused to go down into the basement and just stood at the top of the stairs. To give you perspective on how my basement was laid out, all of my extra stuff from my childhood, like clothes and things like that, were piled in the back right corner. So when you walked down the stairs, on the very right was where all that stuff was. And all my roommate's stuff was right next to mine on the left. There was a bench with all of the previous owner's stuff that they had left there too. While going down there, the sound was still very clear and it was getting louder the farther I got in. 
I saw the window opened and making noises and decided to go and close it, thinking it was nothing else. As soon as I closed it, it felt like a hand grabbed my leg, but it wasn't a normal hand. It was super hot. My legs were swooped back and I fell down. All I can remember from this point on was my dog barking extremely loudly. I then woke up and found myself in the closet of my roommate's bedroom. I walked downstairs and looked at the time, and it was three o'clock. My roommate wasn't back yet. I literally looked at the clock and grabbed my phone and dog and ran outside the front door. I went over to the neighbor's, which was a mile away. I ran there with bare feet. I didn't have a car at the time. When I got to the neighbors, whom I barely knew, I ringed the doorbell extremely fast. About a minute later, a man opened the door and asked why I was ringing his doorbell this late at night. I could tell he was quite frustrated with me. I told him everything, and he said that the previous owners moved out because the husband of the house ended up hanging himself in the basement. We talked for a bit while I let my dog run around in the back. I called my roommate to not go home and to come over to the neighbors. Around an hour later, he showed up and we all just sat there talking about what had happened. Around 10 o'clock in the morning, I headed back to my house with my roommate to find the sofa flipped, all the doors open, and the cabinets in the kitchen all open with dishes broken on the floor. I decided to go live with my sister and sell the house around two months later. To this day, I'm not sure what that was, and I haven't had any other experiences. I had just broken up with my girlfriend at the time. I heard that ghosts, especially when they die like that, thrive off of bad energy or whatever, so maybe that's why everything happened. I don't know. But if you have a way to explain it, let me know. I like stories about the paranormal, but I've never personally experienced anything, and I tend to be pretty skeptical about them. However, there was a weird experience that I wanted to share and see what people thought about. Back in 2009, I was in college a couple of hours away from home. My grandparents, who I lived with through the last two years of high school, were away from home at their second property, where they were building their retirement home for the weekend and I wanted to get off campus. So my friends, let's call them Jess and Nina, and I decided to go to the house for the weekend. My friend Jess claims to be sensitive. She has told me stories about things coming into her room when she was growing up, and I can tell she's genuine. But to my knowledge, science has yet to demonstrate the existence of any kind of life after death, so I remain skeptical. I could tell something was off as soon as we pulled up to the house. I'm grabbing my bag from the truck, and I look over to her to see her staring up at the house. I ask her if she's okay, and she just says one word, Occupado, and then proceeds to grab her bag from the truck and we all head inside. Let me give you the layout. The house was built in the 80s, and my grandparents bought the place in 99. The previous owner had died in the home, in his sleep, I think. It was a two-story brick home that backed up to a lake. It was quite a nice place to live, but there were also parts of the house that always used to creep me out for some reason. The front sitting room and dining room upstairs, and the stairs to the basement, where I lived in high school. But like I said, I never experienced anything. Anyway, my grandparents knew that we were coming down for the weekend, but they were going to be gone for a while, so they shut off all the water in the house, except for to the downstairs bathroom. We all go inside, and a few hours later, Jess decides to go downstairs to use the bathroom. Nina and I stay upstairs watching a movie. She's gone for quite some time, and when she comes back upstairs, she asks us what we wanted while she was in the bathroom. 
Nina and I just look at each other, confused. We hadn't left the room and we hadn't called for her. We didn't know what she was talking about. She asks if either one of us had come downstairs and tried to turn the bathroom door handle while she was in there. We looked at her, incredulous, and tell her that we had not. She grows pale and my heart starts to race. I think someone is in my house. Nina and I grab knives from the kitchen and go room to room searching for an intruder. We find nothing. The house is quiet for the rest of the weekend. I still think about that sometimes. I don't know what it was. Maybe my friend was daydreaming and maybe she got into her own head. Maybe she was messing with us, although she swears up and down that she wasn't, and she looked genuinely terrified. Maybe there was someone in the house, though I'm pretty sure we would have heard them opening a door. Also, there was a security system that beeped if any door or window were opened. I just don't know. What do you think? This happened to me many years ago. I was maybe 10. I'm 23 now. My sister and I were over at her friend's house, which she had told us was haunted during prior visits. It was just us. Her mom was at work and her little sister was at daycare. We were down in the basement, which was half finished. It was furnished, but the walls had no siding yet. We were messing around down there, jumping on the couch, just doing kid stuff. We decided we were hungry, so we headed upstairs, shut the basement lights off, and took an immediate right at the top of the stairs into the kitchen. We were in there maybe a few minutes making sandwiches, when all of a sudden we heard the loudest, most blood-curdling scream I've ever heard come from the basement. It was absolutely terrifying. I don't know if three kids have ever gotten out of a house so fast. We sat on the curb across the street until her mom got home. I've had several encounters with what I presume to be the paranormal, but that was by far the most horrifying and memorable. It still gives me the creeps to talk about it, and to this day I'll sometimes text my sister to ask if she remembers it, just to make sure I'm not crazy. So, I decided to post this after the sixth person who has come into my basement has said that they feel off, overwhelmed, and like they're being watched. I usually bring them down to play billiards, and I have my old PS2 and Xbox 360 down there as well. The basement is finished, painted, and carpeted, and there's an office down there too. They always leave saying that they all felt the same things and that they're so put off by it that they never want to go into my basement again. Yesterday, one of my friends left his mask in my basement, went back down to get it by himself, and said that he felt like his heart was beating out of his chest. I also want to note that when we first moved in, for the first month or so, we would find an unreasonable amount of dead centipedes across the basement floor, but only in the room with the billiards table. The office room never had a single centipede in it. All of a sudden, the centipedes just stopped. Never saw one again. It's been two years. I felt the same weirdness, but I always ignored it. I'm usually afraid of basements because I generally don't like being underground, so it wasn't unusual to me. But then everyone else started talking about it. I've also noticed that my house has become more active as in lights turning on and off when nobody's home, doors opening and closing for no reason, doorknobs jiggling aggressively, things moving to very peculiar places. I really don't know what to do with this.
Back in 2014 to 2015, I was in high school and living with my parents. My parents were heavy on Christianity growing up, so I was raised going to church two times a week. My mom is extremely spiritual as well. Anyway, for years, my mom kept telling everybody that there was a lot of spiritual warfare that was going on in our house. Everybody in my family just thought she was crazy, but I strongly believe that it was true. My sister started going down the wrong path. My dad was apparently cheating on my mom for years, things like that. My parents started noticing some weird type of feces in our basement window wells. So one night, my mom asked me to help her find out what it was by going into the basement with the lights off and only using a flashlight. We went down there and were quietly waiting to see if we could figure out what it was when all of a sudden we heard a whisper that was so loud, it almost felt like it was coming from a surround sound speaker. It was almost as if somebody came right up into both of our ears and whispered. It immediately sent chills down my whole body and my mom too. We both froze for a second and my mom said, what was that? Was that you? And I said, no, what was that? We both bolted up the stairs screaming and we refused to go back down that night. My dad tried to say that we were just crazy and hearing things. I've never felt so uncomfortable and violated in my entire life. Something definitely whispered into our ears, but we couldn't make out what it had said. Still to this day, thinking about it freaks me out. Since then, my parents divorced and sold the house Growing up, I had experienced a few strange things in that house, and my sisters did as well. Sometimes we would hear what almost sounded like a phone vibrating in the basement, but we couldn't ever figure out where it was coming from. It happened multiple times in the span of five years. I truly believe that there was a demonic entity messing with my family. My husband told me this story the other day. This security guard, now a middle-aged man, had no idea that the two of us were active on Reddit, but he wanted us to tell his story. So here it is. I was a young man back then and had been working on the job for a few years now. I was a security guard working the security detail in a large shopping mall. Back then, Shopping malls were a new phenomenon in the country, and people had no idea how to guard them properly. There weren't exactly a lot of us on the security detail. I was joined by a very young man, inexperienced. It was probably the first time he'd been on a job like this, and this older gentleman who had been working security all across the area. I had only been on the job for about a fortnight. We were all just sitting around on our posts. I had expected another slow night at the mall. Things didn't really happen in our part of the city. It must have been around midnight when I started hearing the clanking of chains from the basement area. The sound was so loud that it startled me. I sat up in my seat and became attentive. Maybe I was mistaken. But as the clanking continued, I realized it was definitely coming from the basement area. Confused, I paced around for a bit until the younger guard came running toward me. He asked me about the sound. I told him I had no idea what it was. After a bit of discussion, we decided to go check it out. We grabbed a torch, informed the older gentleman, and started descending into the basement below. The mall had shops in the basement, but the sound was coming from the storage area and that was extremely unusual. No one had access to the basement except for a handful of employees, including the three of us. There was only a single elevator that could take you to that floor and a set of stairs. The young guard and I opted for the stairs, 
mainly because we wanted to surprise or potentially scare whoever was making those sounds. By the time we descended to the ground floor, our torch turned off. This alarmed the two of us. We were already creeped out. The young man had already started to sweat. I told him not to worry, reminded him that we had guns if something went south, and opened a small single door that opened into the basement. As you can expect, it was pitch black. All we could hear was the clanking, now louder and right in front of us. I was afraid for my life. We could have been attacked at any moment. My heart started to race. I banged the flashlight on my leg and it sprung to life. There was an empty chair right in front of us, a few meters from the door. The clinking continued. Shaking, I pointed the flashlight around and saw the most bizarre scene unfolding. Metal chains, where they'd come from, I had no idea. We had no chains in storage. Were being moved from one end of the basement to the other. I could see them gleam in the torch's light. I was stunned. No one was carrying them. The young guard I had brought with me was already screaming. I pointed the flashlight around until it landed on the chair. Only now, there was a middle-aged man sitting on it. Looking at us, he had a terrifying expression on his face. He was clearly angry. A weird gust of wind blew by me, and the torch fell to the floor. The young man screamed again and became unconscious. All the while, the chains continued moving. I was so frightened that I ran, leaving the young man on the floor of the basement with God knows what. Something I still feel bad about to this day. So, I grew up in a house that had a few spirits in it. My family are all skeptics and would find some way to explain things away. A few experiences and then I'll get to the main story. First, our house was three stories with technically three master bedrooms, one on each floor. The one on the main floor we used as an office. I would constantly hear somebody walking around in the office at night sinks turning on, toilets flushing, and occasionally I'd hear talking. My parents would always say that someone was awake and making those noises, and that the toilet and water running was just faulty pipes. Maybe on the pipes, but no one was ever awake during the other things. Second, there would be a shadow figure that would pace on the top floor. There was like a balcony that overlooked the foyer, and I would usually see who I presumed was a lady in a dress, pacing. My parents just said it was the shadow of somebody outside. We were on a hill overlooking all of our neighbors. I don't know how they thought this was possible. Third, I hated using the upstairs bathroom, which was my bathroom. I would hear talking and singing from the bathroom. When no one was home and I was in there, someone would bang on the door. One time I was showering and listening to music. I heard the banging really loudly, so loudly that it shook the room. Then the locked door swung open and I heard a scream. My parents said it was just my brother pranking me, which is something that he never did. Anyway, on to the main event. My brother's about 10 years older than me. He was the only sibling living at home with my parents and I. He had the master bedroom in the basement. I was never really in the basement except for going to the garage because it was in the basement next to the bedroom. I always remember feeling uneasy down there, but I wanted a big room. So when my brother moved out, I begged my parents to let me have his room and eventually they caved and let me have it. I moved all of my stuff downstairs, painted it and everything. I loved my new room. I was talking to my brother about it one day 
and he casually says, watch out for the little girl who lives down there. She likes to laugh. I was shocked, as obviously he was kidding, right? My whole family, besides me, never talked about stuff like that. I just laughed and shrugged it off. I figured he was probably trying to scare me. About a week after I moved into my new room, I had a friend come over and we were just laying on the floor next to the bathroom, laughing and stuff like that. She had to go to the bathroom, so she closes the door and I was just kind of zoning out. All of a sudden she goes, that's not funny. I asked her what she meant as I hadn't done anything. She said that she heard somebody laughing right outside the door, but I didn't do anything or hear anything. She left freaked out, and I assumed that my brother put her up to it, since she liked my brother. A few days later, I hear someone in my bedroom while I'm in the shower. I call out thinking it's my mom, but I don't hear anything. I get out, and as I'm putting my robe on, I hear a little girl giggle, and then, are you looking for me? I freak out. I throw open the door to my room, but nobody's there. I check the garage and ended up setting off the house alarm. So nobody could have come or gone through there without everyone knowing. I run upstairs and my mom is pissed that I set off the alarm and I told her what just happened. She then told me that my brother had a similar story when we first moved in, but that it was nothing. I called my brother and asked him why he told me to watch out for the little girl. He said that I was the little girl. He said he was kidding because, quote, you would always come downstairs and giggle really creepy. I never did anything like that. I told him that, and that's when he got legitimately creeped out. I still would occasionally hear the little girl. I never saw her, but she did like to laugh and open the bathroom and closet doors. I named her Sarah. My brother called me up today to ask me about this. He asked me if I was sure that I never tried to scare him by laughing, and I told him no. He got uncomfortable. I don't think he knows how to handle the fact that our house was mildly haunted. So something just happened in the basement, and I thought I'd tell you about it. Here's a little house layout to help a bit. Our living room has two ways to enter, one from the kitchen and one from the front door. The staircase leads right down to the front door. The way to the living room from the front door has you pass a hallway that has closets and the door to the basement. So it's 1.39 in the morning and I'm done scrolling through social media and decide to sleep. However, I want to cuddle with my kitty while I rest. I have a kitty sleeping on the headboard, but she's so peaceful I don't want to interrupt her. So I decide to head down to the main floor to find one of my other two cats. Down the stairs, I see my fluffy Newfoundland dog sleeping by the front door as usual. I decide to take the way through the kitchen to grab a snack. Then I come into the living room and I see my other cat sleeping in their cat tree. They look so peaceful, I decide it would be rude if I let one sleep and took the other one to cuddle with. So I let them sleep and started my way back into my room through the hallway. As I come to the archway from the living room to that hallway, the basement door slams all the way open hitting a table that we have behind it. I'm scared out of my mind and immediately turn around to go the way through the kitchen. As I approach the front door, I pet my dog and I remember thinking, maybe I'll see a ghost down the hallway. I can take a peek. My biggest fear is ghosts and demons, so I have no idea why I did this. I don't even walk to the hallway. I just peek around the wall. The basement door is swaying back and forth gently. I get even more scared and run to the top of the stairs, into my room, shut the door, pull up Reddit, and basically now dreading the fact that I have to pee because I don't want to leave my room. 
I want to say that it's the air conditioning, but down that hall, there are no vents. The only vent is in the laundry room, which is past a weirdly long hallway, and it has a door. I have no idea what could have made that door do that. So, I live in a basement in my parents-in-law's house. My wife never goes down to my room in the basement. I'm almost always in there alone. Since I've lived in there, a few things have been happening that I dismissed as ventilation or something else, such as my door slowly creeping open. Frankly, I wouldn't even have noticed it opening if it weren't for the green indicator light of something that I have plugged into the wall outside of my room. At night, if I have to leave my room, I exit and make an immediate left, and I dip into the bathroom for restroom use. I can almost always sense an entity in the living area or bar area of the basement. This feeling is compounded when I exit the bathroom and my reflection appears on the wall out sliding doors. Sometimes I don't have a face in my reflection. I quickly re-enter my bedroom and shut and lock the door. Some nights there's a knocking from within the mattress that wakes me up, usually between 3 and 3.15 in the morning. I have no way of dealing with this other than risking it and fleeing upstairs to my son's room. My son is three, has autism, and frequently says, that's scary, over and over in the basement, looking toward the bathroom and living areas. The light switches that I have access to when leaving the room frequently cease to function right when I need them, or will flicker out almost violently as I'm on the staircase halfway up and out of the basement. I can hear rustling in the middle of the night sometimes as well, and I usually convince myself that it's a mouse. Lately, this has graduated to the sound of footsteps in the ceiling in the middle of the night. Most recently, when I heard those footsteps, no one was home but me, and I searched the house, wielding a knife for an intruder, to find no one. I think this entity is aware that I know it exists. I once interacted with it via the mirror, and it contorted my face. I have no idea what this is, or if I should be concerned. This all happened when I was a kid. I was spending the weekend at my mom's house. My parents were separated. And I woke up one morning and watched some cartoons in her room while she slept. Eventually, I turned the TV off and went downstairs to make a bowl of cereal. I sat down at the table, which was about 10 feet from the open basement door. As I was eating, I heard my mom call me very loudly from the basement. The only things down there were a washing and drying machine and a toilet. I walked over to the door and peeked down there and it was pitch black. That's when I remembered that my mom was asleep upstairs and hadn't come past me at all. So I freaked out, ran upstairs to her room, and sure enough, she was there asleep. There was no way that it could have been her, and it was just us in the house. The apartment gave me off, strange, and creepy vibes. My mom and I and a few other people all hated the feeling that you would get in the basement and the back room upstairs would give off very negative energy. Every time you went in there, you would start feeling kind of sad and very alert. She never used that room. It only had a couple of boxes in it for the five or so years that she lived there. Has anyone else had similar experiences?
My brother and I were staying the night at our grandma's house. For context, her house is in the middle of the ghetto. My brother and I were watching TV and my grandma was at the store. Suddenly, my brother says, want to go in the basement? Not trying to sound like I was weak, I said yes. Now, this was the worst decision of the month. So we go into the basement and it is really creepy. When we reach the bottom of the staircase, the door shuts behind us. I just shake it off as natural, but still a little uneasy. We go into the garage because her garage is in the basement. So we start going through there and we find a rusty pipe and a motorcycle handlebar and some faint writing on the wall. Obviously there were other things like lawnmowers and stuff like that. All of a sudden we hear bam, like a metal door slamming. It was the laundry room door. So my brother and I are crabbing our pants. So we run back upstairs, scared out of our minds. Later that night, we start to fall asleep. Grandma's asleep. And then we hear what sounds like all of the basement doors opening and slamming. My grandma's not awake and we end up falling asleep. We tell grandma about it the next day and she just laughs and says, oh, that's just Jim messing with you. Then she explains that Jim was the old house owner who died there. That didn't really help us, but I guess it eased our minds a little bit. I have this problem since I've moved in to where I currently live. It's a rather basic problem. The lights in the basement go out at night. At first, I thought it was just the light bulb itself, so naturally, I changed it. Yet, whenever I wanted to grab something from the basement and it happened to be around 1 to 5 a.m., the light just wouldn't go on. I changed the bulb several times and it did nothing. The strangest thing is that I can literally have it turned on all evening and it's fine. Then I watch it go dark at night. It annoyed me to the point where I recently called an electrician to check if everything was all right with the wiring. Maybe it's some sort of automatic switch that turns it off during the night, right? Long story short, I paid quite some money for him to check everything and he found nothing. I can't blame him since everything works perfectly fine during the day. The next thing I did was set up different lights inside of the room, a light with a battery. At this point, I got a little freaked out since it turned off as well. I carried it back upstairs and after a minute or so, it worked perfectly fine again. I carried it back downstairs and after a few seconds, it went out. I'm not exactly on the edge because my house isn't really haunted. I don't have bad dreams, no poltergeist activity or anything. It's literally just this strange light situation. As you can probably tell, I'm quite the skeptic. But could this actually be something paranormal? Could it be something natural? Magnetic fields or something? I'm not experienced with these kinds of things. Maybe there are other things I could try. I just think it's really weird that the lights in the basement, all of them, go out at night. This story happened a long time ago but I still remember it like it was yesterday, and so does my cousin. Our families were very close growing up. We were there often, usually just watching movies. We were young, and this was around the time that the killer clown thing was happening. So when we would watch movies, they would usually be horror, The Conjuring, Annabelle, etc. I was about 12 at the time. My cousin was 14, her brother was 12 and my brother was eight. 
We were in their basement one night while our parents and older siblings went out for the night. Babysitters weren't something we had. It was lock the doors, stay together, and don't answer the phone. My cousin's basement had a TV in the corner of the room and on the same wall was a projector. My cousin, 12 year old boy, and my brother had the hockey game playing on TV and Call of Duty on the projector while my cousin and I, she was a 14 year old girl, were sitting shoulder to shoulder on the couch back to the wall with our headphones in watching videos on our phones. Our brothers decided they were hungry and turned on the lights as they went upstairs to find something to eat. My cousin and I sat for about five minutes before her brother's bedroom door in the basement slowly closed. When the door came to a full close, the lights in the room turned off along with the projector and the TV. I paused the video that I was watching on YouTube and first assumed that it was a power outage as I didn't believe in ghosts. But when I checked my battery, I saw that my iPod was still charging. Before I could do anything, I heard the sound of my brother and cousin laughing, almost giggling behind my head, as if they were right behind my ear. But it sounded off. It didn't sound exactly like them. It creeped me out, and my head shot up and toward my cousin, who was already looking at me with her eyes wide. Like I said, we were backed up to a wall, so there's no way anybody could have been behind us. Neither of us missed a second to get up and run upstairs. The first thing we did when we got up there was to look at each other. I said, you heard it too? She agreed, explaining to me what she had heard, which was exactly what I had also heard. We walked toward the kitchen and saw her brother. We explained to him what had happened he didn't believe us and told us that my brother had been on the third floor bathroom ever since they left and they didn't talk or laugh. This creeped out my cousin and I even more and when he went downstairs everything was turned back on and the bedroom door was open. We talk about that night every few years and it still creeps us out to this day. I'm not sure if I'm haunted or something but I do have a lot of ghost stories that started happening after that night. Kids that I babysit keep telling me that they see things around me or similar things from that night will happen to me in my basement with or without other people there. Whenever I tell people about these events, they seem to have something happen to them afterwards and stories come back to me. Usually the ones who joked about what happened or didn't believe in it had an encounter. I think something followed me out of her basement that day, but I don't know if it's evil, if that's possible. I still can't really explain it. It's just odd.